No one can know what will happen from one moment to the next in a cyberspace. Not even the space maker. Well, I was about to write a screenplay about virtual reality and cryogenics. A deeply frozen brain, iced up with frozen memories. You woke a part of me that knew the words but didn't know the song. You should certainly think in terms of getting your affairs in order. Freep days. Do ya? Deep freeze. I'm back in charge of my own story. I can take control of it. I know what to do now. quite so delighted in the entire span of my professional life, or indeed my life in general, to be able to reach into the actual memory, the actual mind of a human being who died 374 years ago, and then to lose it. Lose it. And for the time being, we'll surely be able Luanda. to... Luanda. Professor? Our circuits have involved, what, four and a half billion neurons in this man's cerebral cortex? Out of more than 10 billion, yes. Say about 43% of the neurons. The highest we have ever attempted. So it's overload. I have concentrated on those areas of the brain where it is easiest to stimulate the emotions or the memories or, yes, desires like the front part of the hypothalamus and the septal area. Which, of course, is nearby. Of course. Fyodor, do we need a running commentary? Oh, I'm sorry if that is what you think it is, Professor Pollock. Can we bear a wider spread? Same percentage of neurons, but more span. Emma, we're in Zonkonu territory here, and I just don't know. I wonder. Sound. This time there was sound. We're obviously on the rim of it. There's some process we're missing out on, or... Dr. Watson, what were you doing with your bio brace? I'm sorry, that sounds rude. Doing? Why? Nothing that I know of. Kaya notices everything you do, sir. 
If she says... Linda! If you want to take ten for a fuck, go ahead, dear. But what did you see? Um, well, I... Come on, out with it. Tony, Dr. Watson was kind of... You were fiddling about a little with your cuff, and I happened to notice that your fingers brushed against the wire brace. Well, if you say so. Why are you wearing this one? Hey, loosen your... What do you mean? This is a hibernation peptide wire brace. Totally, totally out of order. Okay, okay, so I left on yesterday's tooling, but I don't see... Hello. What were you using on those cells yesterday? Alpha Neuropeptide 1042. But it's all been discharged by now. And in any yeah, that case... is not the point. If you haven't put it through the chemo stair, there could still be a trace. 1042. Of... 1042. That was hitting the synaptic cleft, right? Yes, but only on the outer membrane of that area where the cortex of a hibernating animal. My God. Precisely. Emma? What have I? Pollock, Cryolab A, fuel. Three, no, four bi-brace files with alpha neuropeptide 1042. That's mine, Dr. Watson, Dr. Glazunov, Dr. Partington. Priority A+. Plus. Cost a lot. Keep your accountant's snout out of it, Carl. You're on the rim of your budget, you nasty old bitch. Just do it, and now. Budgets, budgets! They'll strangle us yet. But accident, sheer accident, beautiful serendipity has played a bigger part in all science than... What? Memory of Daniel Field. Association football game at Craven Cottage, once football stadium in London. Goal by Alan Mullery of Fulham against Leicester City. What amazes me. Stupefying. It's the sound the of the, the crowd. I mean... There must be hundreds upon hundreds of people all gathered together in the same place. Thousands, actually, if you know your history. Oh, we all know that in theory, of course. But to experience it? Wow, mind's Lancelot. And that they could feel safe. We must have been almost touching each other. Oh, that's just the tiniest fragment, the merest gleam of a hint of what we have in store for us. If, 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 if we can break into this man's synapses. Imagine the wonder of it all. If we wear our VR helmets, we can live for hours at a time in the real past, the authentic past, and, and, and perhaps escape. Escape from what, Emma? Coming at angle 6.25. Angle correct for Lazarus. Number correct for Lazarus. Please say again. How many files? Seven files. Alpha neuropeptide. One. Zero. Four. Two. Gotcha. Cleared. Hey. Cosby. We're gonna see a club side after hour. Yeah? We'll play schmuck dies. Okay? <laughs> All right, misery. But remember, I'm one up with only two smacks to go. <laughs> Cave your chest, pal. The neuropeptide files, Emma. Hot call lab A. Board call lab A. Professor Emma Porlock. This is Martina Matilda Mazdon at 8.22 a.m. Los Angeles time. 5.22 p.m. your West Europe time. Register what I have to say. I am registering, Miss Mazdon. Ordering up four files of alpha neuropeptide 1042 without so much as even a token reference to the biochemical tranche of your very specifically allotted budget is a an impertinence pure and simple if not impure and complex and b plain ignorance for you have no knowledge of nor any apparent desire to find out <laughs> the particular market price of that special neuropeptide and see an almost certain guarantee you foolish woman the 
that your whole two ounce frog shit operation will end up splattered all over your own face. And why? Because you have tilted tit up into an overspend. 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 On next Thursday's Intercontinent Agenda, your whole Lazarus operation will be listed for discussion as either A, suspension, or B, abandonment. Got it. Which side of which bed did you get out of this morning, Martina? Hey, now, Dave. That was me being a very reasonable lady. Correct, my boy? Correct. Fear and or greed are both, boy. You tell me a better stick, a better carrot. But how do you do it? Do what? Voice call is still nothing of a place. About a little bit of damn all while you're still chewing your berries. What's a god supposed to be, Mr. Seals? Christ, come on, Dave. A god ain't a god unless he slash she is omnipotent, right? Sure. Give or take the odd cardiac or earthquake. See those monitors over there? I've got what? 32 lab complexes dotted here, there, every fucking where. Yup. All over. Uh-huh. And most of them, 28 of them, in fact, they don't give me any more trouble than a, a kink in my tube of toothpaste. You know, a little squish. <laughs> and if money is shit, any it is. Well, then, most of my centers are as fat as a full colon. You betcha. They can't avoid making a profit. <laughs> they fill the pan as regularly as a boy on prunes. <sighs> but even so, look at those monitors. I make it a habit to check in every now and then, voice only. Make them think their every move is under scrutiny. And as for the rest, the more problematic ones, well, I kind of offer. In each finance department, I've got my own personal agent that works direct to me. Uh-huh. Outside any form and all discipline. Right. And... As any one section of any one center makes any one expenditure decision for any one tranche of any one internal subsection budget, I get a coated beep at once. Oh, so that was what I heard when I spilled the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> no sweat. And then, hmm, I look up at those monitors and I punch in my own close shot of any one workroom anywhere in the whole damn place. Look. 29. 29? That's the place in England. Shit house. 16. 16. The lab that made the overspend. And Dave, if you want to wear a helmet, well, then, of course, you can just get right in there and smell and taste what's a cooking, hey? Well, uh... I have no meeting due for, uh... Well, sure, Martina. Why not? Manolo! Mrs. Marston? A VR helmet for my guest pronto. And some data gloves, eh? Sure thing, Mrs. Marston. I, uh... I got another little matter I've got to take care of first day. Best exercise I know of, Dave. You really should try it more often. Right. But not with me, babe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Martina. Mr. C? Thanks, Manolo. Got it. This is 
Amazon say stop when you board, sir. She said I'd be soon. Yes. What do you mean, yes, like that? It's the out-of-body experience. It's been recorded many times by those who have been brought back from the brink. So he's not actually dead at this precise moment? How can he be? I'm afraid he's of all. Daniel! Take it that he is dead now. Quote, dead. Unquote. Oh. Don't be silly, girl. Sorry. But yes, it is rather like a little tale already. Imagine what we might Here it comes. Coming. What is going on? The second most often recorded experience by those brought back from the brink ever. A tunnel with... Uh, there's supposed to be a bright light at the end of it. Let's see. Oh, you see? It's happening! It's happening!
It's no mortal pain because I've been dragged back from the light. This was when he was so secured with an absolute zero temperature. I've always wanted. Thank you, my darling. Thank you. That's for being a good boy. Let's hope we can continue to come together, eh? <laughs> this hat, isn't it just wondroso? Try it on. Dare I? That's what it's for, Nat. Put it on. <sighs> hey. Ceilings have ears. Mast and cow. That's who you mean, lady, that mast and cow. There's enough of what I know to be what I admit. This is the most expensive, by far, of any of the very latest neuropeptides. I mean, we're talking... What is it? A key. A key? I thought key meant an answer or an analogical representation of other qualities. Oh, it has an older meaning. And you'll still find it used occasionally other than as a metaphor. What? A metaphor? What's that? You dumb shit. Sure am, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is the original meaning. Now we use pads or numbers or bioprints to get at things secure. But no cop is bright enough to work out what the fuck to do with this little fella. Great Godolo. Surprised? But... But Martina... <gasps> What are you doing? That's a, what do you call it? A... It's a cigarette. <gasps> Does it burn your mouth? No. You'll see. I'll give you a try. Will you? Mm -hmm. Will you really? But if anyone ever finds out... They won't. Oh, don't be a dickhead. Some of the illicit, my boy. <laughs> there. All the pleasures of life, Nat. Plus the luxury of the purely criminal. 30 years prison. And the good old needle death if you sell it. See? I trust you, my boy. Mind you. You'd be wiped out in a minute if you opened your chops. Oh. I feel, uh, uh, I, I feel sort of giddyish and, um, yes, I can feel the power, the nico nicotine, my mind, it's working faster. Holy mozioso, I could do an equation now just like that. Go get yourself dressed. I'll see you at 8 o'clock this evening. 
Martina? Come on. All right, my sweet darling. What am I missing? We have achieved a major breakthrough. I just wish we had the budget to go further. You may not know it, but you just found yourself a fairy godfather, lady. You go back to the house. Yes. Thank you. Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> I mean, it really, it was absolutely fascinating, Martina. I, uh, I, I wouldn't have missed that. But... David Siltz. Yes. You are a complete and utter fraud. Now, listen here, Martina. Oh, what... don't worry. I don't blame you. These biochemists and what have you would make a camel piss away its own hump just to have something more interesting to do. <laughs> Dave, my boy. You need a lavender. Yeah, I guess I do. But will you have had any sense of being well? Alive again? Does that trouble you, Dr. Watson? Does it not trouble you, Dr. Basil? <laughs> Whenever one is at any sort of new edge, a new question will always pose itself. I don't know yet whether we are going to face one of those absolute dilemmas or not. It's not yet yay or nay, and nothing in between. Luanda? Now, we know from our own experience that much memory, most of the time, is involuntary. We do not summon it up, so to speak. It the memory beckons to us. True, but... Go on, Luanda. But you can see this more especially in sleep if you think about it. I'm thinking about it. You can leave any time you wish, Fyodor. Hey. hey. Luanda. A host of past memories, past inventions, whole distortions, odd fragments out of place in our past, like we're suddenly back at school again, say. But the sleeper, the dreamer, is not usually aware that he or she is asleep. True. There's no volition in it, is there? So, in a sense, no identity. I mean... Yes! Oh, this Daniel Seal, this man from all those centuries ago, is not any more aware that he has a partly functioning brain than a, a dreamer is that he is asleep. And another thing, if I may dare to intrude, Professor Paul. Oh, don't be so silly. When we saw Daniel Field in the tunnel-like world, the man saw himself in the scene, as when he was a small child, scared of that silly little song. Do we see ourselves as objects, as actors in our own memory? No, I don't think we do. So, he isn't, quote, alive, unquote. File one, query My one. God, they took long enough. The speech pattern of bespectacled man used to be called spoonerism. That is, initial sounds of words are reversed to make a new sense, as in queer dean, 
instead of Dear Queen. Called after Reverend W. A. Spooner, 1844 to 1930. Query costs $385 uni dollars. Repeat, $385 uni dollars. I'm sorry, Emma. I'll try not to ask too many questions. Tight our salt. Oh, it's this precious internal market of the Masden Group. They charge a fee for anything that could be argued as outside our remit. Well, in this case, all one can say in reversed initial sound is... Muck fee. But, Professor, <laughs> if we're on so tight a reign, I mean, this is a tragedy across every arts and science discipline I can think of. History, memory enhancement, brain surgery, grammar, a perspective on ourselves. I know, I know. Can't we appeal direct to Martina Maston? Can't we make her see? No, she's walled in by prejudice, as fat as her profits and as thick as her armed guards. You need thermonuclear backup to get even a quarter of a millimeter into her skull. To boredom. Well, uh, I suppose I better drink to that when all is said and done. <laughs> you went into showbiz, Dave, because you always did have ants crawling up your orifice. Excitement. Excitement. All oh, that glitz, eh? <laughs> I have 800 million subscribers, Martina, and a link into three times that with my memory lane programs. From a baseline like that, I can't lose. Sure, sure. Plus, all the offshoot and secondary activities, actor management, prepackaging of other entertainment products, food and drink via interactive media, video, virtual reality games, and biggest spinner of the lot, needless to say, Interactive sex with whomever you like, however you like it, in your virtual reality bodysuit. I prefer the real thing. Uh, yeah. But you gotta think of the cripples and the misfits, darling. Okay. Here's to the biz. There's no biz like. We're not in competition. In fact, I wanna talk to you about a particular deal, Dave Boy. Snoop Kestrel, Snoop Kestrel. Angle 2.40 from Tower 3. Snoop Kestrel approach. Shit! What is happening? Say nothing. Nothing. They can pick up a plop of shit in a pan at 25 yards distance. <laughs> Martina, what the hell is happening? Those bastards from Kimokyu. They all bribe, backhand, steal, snoop their way into any damn thing of ours they can get a sniff of. It's war, Dave. Nothing short of an all fucking hour wham bam war. Whop! I don't have these problems for Christ's sakes. Why should you? Oh, well, you get poaching of stars, directors, storylines, but hell, Dave. No disrespect intended. But your formulas are pretty standard, yes? You know how to maximize your audience. Too goddamn right, gal. Yeah. But it's a constant fight, I can tell you. Ah, but it keeps us on our tootsie wootsies, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love a good scrap. If I lose 0.2 of an audience in any of my shows, we calculate we lose 0.3 of advertising revenue. So believe you me, anybody on my team on any of my shows who slips under that line gets a kick-ass apply to more than just the right orifice. But my formula, you see, are radically different each time. I have A, antidepressant, B, sleeping pills, C, fox stimulants, D, wake up and feel good pills, E, DNA youth zappers, if one can afford them. <laughs> The sleepers are on a bit of a slide with us at this moment. This is strictly confidential information. Understood? Understood. <laughs> I want to sponsor a show, half hour, Western world. Any half hour between 9.15 and 11.15 p.m. Cost you? Don't I fucking know it. What kind of show? Horror. What kind of horror? Psychological. Oh. No axes, chainsaws, chisels, gouged eyeballs, blood-sucking, asphyxiation, uh, then what you mean? Uh, no. 
the shadow at the top of the stairs. The half whispers, half heard in the head. The hollow nothing at the back of the eye. The wind in the chimney. The footsteps that wasn't there. The darkness outside the door. The door. The door. Okay, okay, I got the category, Martina. <laughs> Unease. You're not kidding. Angst. Gotcha. Anyway, an unsettling half hour for those who have that disposition. People like to be scared, don't they? Oh, sure. If they're safe. That's a good market. Mm. Well, it's the one I'm after. Dave, we've been working on encephalance. That's a group of peptides in the brain, okay? Oh. We think that we found this cluster that blocks messages that are being transmitted from one segment of the brain to the other. Are you with me? Yeah. And the messages this group of peptides stops is, wait for it, anxiety. We put up a roadblock, angst, no entry, got it? Uh, sort of. <sighs> but first... Hell, Dave, it's as clear as a boil on the back of a fat man's ass. First, we gotta make a whole damn zillion folks anxious. And that's where your TV, VR, and whatever the hell else comes in. So, you want a half hour of terror so you no, can frighten... No, not terror. Unease the dog at the top of the stairs. Wake up, will you? Maybe you should take some kind of pill yourself, Martina. <laughs> You're very welcome, Theodore. It's ages since we've ventured past the company diner. I'm looking forward to it. Please come. No, thank you. I want to watch the big movie. I want to cram my head full of pretty nonsense and airy nothings. Ron. Ron, see, it's getting to be everywhere you look. The message of the day. You know, for ages, I thought it was just a name. Ron. Who is this Ron, I thought? And too stupid to ask. Ask the wrong questions and you get the cups spanning to your wrists, honey. <laughs> OK, this is FG 170535. Stop here on left, 20 yards up. Will do. You sure? Quite sure. Thank you. Some other time, though. Reality or nothing. Ron. What a piss-ass nomenclature for those killers, huh? There must be an acronym for what they want, which would spell out S-H-I-T. <laughs> nice. Evening, Mr. Glazunov. Evening. Checking. There was a shootout down the street just 20 minutes ago, sir. They caught a bunch of those Ron people on their way to a meeting or something. Good. Attention scared. Ready, we can't get all the bosses. Eh? Welcome home, Mr. Glasnow. I'll get a team of scripters onto it as soon as you come up with some development money. How much? <laughs> oh, hey, we got agents for that, huh? All right, Dave, but no bug-eyed monsters, right? I want spiders crawling up the lining of your throat. Is that what your troublesome lot in London are working on? Those uh, encephalins or whatever it was? No, we extract those from cerebrospinal fluid. They're working on memory enhancers. 
It's such a tiny sector of the market. They're asking for trouble if they go into overspend. Why do you ask? Oh, that woman you were bawling out. I got a feeling I was at cyber college with her. Yeah, that's so. Well, so many years ago, but there was something about her. To... <laughs> Christ, to look back so far gives me the shudders. <laughs> but, yep, I'm off to England tomorrow. You are? <laughs> Trouble's a little dump, huh? Why the laugh? I don't know. It's, uh, it's the way we say England, when no such place even exists as a political entity for, what, not 200 years? Yeah, but they still call it that themselves. God! They're more trouble than they're worth. Maybe I should look this old broad up and frighten her with a description of your present mood. Emma Porlock? Yes. Oh, I'm sure. That was her a name. A brilliant cryobiologist, but otherwise the pain in the rectum of all time. Anyway, she's frightened enough already, Dave. The bitch has barked and shown her fangs. This bitch, I mean. <laughs> Goodbye, Martina. Don't bite me, gal. Bye. Emma Prolock. Professor Emma Prolock. It's strange that way. There are times when you persuade yourself that he positively wants to be liked, and then he deliberately says and does the wrong thing. To me, Fyodor is a total enigma. Yes, but he's a very great scientist in his own area. The central question of how memory can be held by differing groups of cells in a way that suggests that memory itself cannot be located. That's right. I mean, if you stimulate any one part of the brain, you can see that that part is definitely related to certain functions, like sex or fear. But memory, in quotes, escapes this labeling. Whereas, if you excite the front end of the hypothalamus, as well as its septal area, you will get sexual excitation. I'm stiff with excitement. <laughs> you would be if I tickled your hypothalamus. <laughs> <laughs> ah then we might make our Daniel Field have a purely sexual memory if we use the term... If we can do anything at all with Daniel. Emma? She'll cut us off. I sense it. I know it in my bones. That witch, Martina Matilda Masden. We simply won't be able to afford any submicrosbic modifications of any of Daniel's surviving brain circuits. We may as well throw him in the bin. Surely, if we show what can be done, what we've already done. The first time ever anyone has broken into a head with any memory from near antiquity. Well, surely, surely she cannot stand in the way She's of... She's not. The company is not in the slightest degree interested in science for its own sake. We stand about as much chance of being able to continue... Get under the table. Quickly. Quickly. Get that door shut! You're safer inside!
out. Professor Porlock of Masden Science Centers, Inc. And these are my colleagues, Drs. Watson and Partington. Why were you so appallingly late? And why do you pay so little regard for ordinary civilian life? Shut your food hole, you dried up old bag. Try doing what we do for a week and then yap, yap about it. Those bastards there, those rons. Got more spunk juice in them. All you sit on your ass, scientists and button pushers put together. You know something? You might even be right, for once. Let's get out of here, for God's sake. Hey, wait a moment! You can't just... UP110761, car. But oh, no. The air, you know? It sort of, it sort of... Stinks. To think, in days gone by, people used to go for walks, half a mile sometimes, breathing all this in. Don't worry, I've ordered up my bubble in the library, so I'll drop you both off at your places. It wasn't like this then, the air. Oh, we have so much to learn, or relearn from the past. Daniel Field, in a way, he could have been our... Yes, our teacher. I think I've satisfied myself on the ethical side of Daniel Phil's half-life. Odd, isn't it, what goes on in your head when you're scared out of your wits? But it came to me when I was cowering under that table. Beep. Shut up and wait. Identify. Please ident. EP1107061. Shut up and wait. Carry on, Luanda. Explain. Yes, yeah, please. We have the answer in front of us. Every time we look at the living wall in the laboratory, as long as that screen stays blank or free of real images, then it means that Daniel only, quote, remembers, only, quote, thinks when under biochemic stimulation, right? No volition, you mean. He has no independent will. Of course. So when it's blank, he himself, or the bits of himself we have left, cannot be aware. And if you're not aware, you're not alive. You're in no mental and no spiritual and no physical torment. <laughs> Clever girl. Come on, let's get in the car. I used to tell myself a story when I was in pain or in fear as a child. I make believe I was in the middle of this kind of book. The one bright book. Say again, old chap. We didn't quite catch it. Daniel, say it. Say it, old lad. What? No, what? 